بسم اللہ بسم اللہ الحمد للہ وسلاۃ وسلام علیہ رسول اللہ و اعلیٰ علیہ وصابی اجمعین بیت ایوری ون ویلکم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ دس از دا ویری فرسٹ ٹائم کمنگ ہیئر اینڈ دا تھری تھنگس دیٹ امپریس می رائٹ اوے وین آئی پولڈ ان ان ٹو دا پارکنگ لاٹ اینڈ آئی کیم ان سائڈ دا ویری فرسٹ تھنگ از دا ویل مینٹین اینڈ دا اسکویکی کلین دا ہال از اینڈ دا مسجد از So, congratulations. Second thing that impressed me, the youth were already here, well-dressed, and they were here to welcome right away, like an hour before all of you came. So, big round of applause to all the youth over here. And the third thing is, so when I came here, I looked at the magazine that you took out, which is the TIA, and I looked at the mission statement. And what struck me from the mission statement is that to develop long-term learners who are responsible and moral citizens in this global community. So the words that struck me are the long-term, the long-term. You know, when I was thinking of this school over here, the TIA school, by the way, the very first time I'm coming here, when I heard about this school, it took me back perhaps a thousand years ago. When I look at the Islamic schools, It takes me back to a thousand years ago, the importance of having Islamic schools. So what do you think happened in the year 1099? If I ask you that question, any one of you. In the history of the world, something drastic, something uh, atrocious happened in the year 1099. Without looking at the chat GPT, all right? <laughs> Anyone? Crusades. Crusades, yes, the Crusades happened, right? Unfortunately, you know, when the Crusades happened, When the Franks, when they came from Europe and they ransacked the city of Jerusalem and all of Palestine and the whole region, there were 30,000 Muslims that took refuge in Majid al-Aqsa. Every single one of them, they were slaughtered. To such an extent that the crusaders, the Franks, they used to come to the Majid al-Aqsa. People were hiding, 30,000 of them. They used to kill some of them and then they, they got so tired and they went back. And then, then they came the next day and the next day until they finished off the whole job. 30,000 Muslims, 25,000 Jews, they were also slaughtered because they took uh, refuge in the synagogues. Those were the dark age, but during that time, and this is the point I want to share with all of you. During that time, of course, many people, they went out, many Muslims, to fight against the crusaders. But they were... Majority of the scholars at that time, Imam Ghazali and the Nizamul Mulk and many other scholars, what they did was, we cannot tackle the Franks at that time, let some Muslims handle, let some Muslims defeat them. We are going to establish Islamic schools. We are going to establish madrasas. We are going to prepare a generation. We are going to instill the right aqeedah and prepare people for activism. and uh, instill the Quran and the Sunnah, we will have the best teachers in this school. So they prepared for about close to uh, 88 years. And from those schools came Salahuddin Ayyubi. Salahuddin Ayyubi did not, he was not dropped out from the clouds. Allah did not just materialize him, right? All of a miracle. Some scholars, they laid the seed. 88 years, not a single salah happened in Majid al-Aqsa, by the way. But the scholars, they realized, you know what? Let's come together. Let's start from scratch. Let's prepare the schools and let's prepare the activists and the students. And then, alhamdulillah, not just one Salahuddin Ayyubi, every single person of that time, they were Salahuddin Ayyubis. And one of them, alhamdulillah, he did the miracle of taking back Jerusalem. So I hope and pray that from this madrasa, From the 3,000 masajis out there, 150 Islamic schools which are out there, peacefully, proactively, inshallah, I hope and pray, we can have an impact not just in this country but around the world. Inshallah. Two weeks ago, based on the current situation, a masjid in Chicago We brought the leaders together, we brought the presidents, ex-presidents and the visionaries, we brought them together 
to find out okay what should be our long term strategy so at that point i mentioned we cannot even strategize only for 2024 or 2030 we have to have a strategy for 2080 we have to have a 50 year strategy so one of the persons the main person up there he was mentioning that you know for the safety of the muslims we should have more people in the lobbying more pe- more people like uh, uh, in the policy makers so he was going on and on i said you know this is excellent by the way right we need to look into the safety of the muslims how muslims should be accepted and uh, how uh, how we should be integrated but then i said this is so incomplete we are not like the polish and the irish and the jews and the hindus suppose tomorrow if people come and say you know what we love you muslims we accept you you can live in peace and harmony i ask the muslims up there do you think our job would be accomplished if they do that to us no it will not be accomplished by the way because allah has given us a higher bigger mission and that mission is not just to live in peace and harmony that is one part of it by the way our mission allah subhanahu wa taala has given and i really 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 want every school every masjid every home to instill this and that is the primary mission of every prophet every messenger is to make sure that they invite humanity to to let them know that who is the creator what is the purpose of life who what is the quran who was prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the concept of accountability so every single school and this is a template also for this school by the way is that we have to have that uh, that that realization in every kid every youth every student in this school that allah has given us a higher bigger mission that is to connect the creation with the creator because we all realize that there is no new prophet to come there is no messenger is to come and allah subhanahu wa taala has given us this obligation In Surah Al-Baqarah ayah number 143 Wa kadhalika ja'alnakum ummatan wasatan litakunu shuhada'a 'ala an-nas wa yakuna ar-rasul 'alaykum shahida So the translation is that you are a umma justly balanced that you become witnesses to humanity the way the messenger of Allah was a witness over you So if I have to have an ideal uh, ideal curriculum for any islamic school dawa should be one of the important parts in that it has to be because that's the prophetic mission and no new prophet is to come and no new messenger is to come the second important uh, uh, element in any ideal syllabus in any islamic school so every child every youth every student they also have to realize that all the social ills which are out there we muslims have a big role to play to suppress and to eliminate the ills of the society if we don't instill that in our children islam is going to become just like christianity going to the church once a week and then islam becomes a personal faith islam is not a personal faith islam is a faith that came to bring peaceful social change in the society amru bil maruf wa nahi anil munkar so an ideal agenda an ideal syllabus and ideal classes in every single school so why am i saying this right because allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned in the quran again in surah ali imran ayah number 110 kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas ta'muruna bil maruf wa tanhawna 'anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah So Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is saying that you are the best of ummah created for humanity because you enjoin good and you forbid evil and you believe in Allah. So when we instill in our children in the students in every single youth that the social ills which are out there are our responsibility so we can tackle them with the guidance Allah has given. So I was uh, speaking with uh, brother Ajmal with the ajmal khan and he's saying i asked him the question that you know have you seen an increase in the number of students over here he said yes definitely right you said there was a big spike and he said there are many reasons for it mashallah we have a really good curriculum we are excelling in so many things right uh, when i was trying to read uh, the the slides before these 
achievements there were so many and they were going so fast by the way i was not able to keep uh, you know keep track of that so if i'm going to ask you brother ajmal can you name three quick achievements of this school what would you say we successfully received the accreditation of the school and the second one uh, we have uh, now came at the second best private school in Toledo area after Maumee Valley and uh, we have also received the AP Platinum Award from the College Board on preparing our student for the college as well as very good preparation for the AP exam based on their very high success rate in the AP exam of the TIA. Allahu Akbar! It's a big achievement, MashaAllah! So that itself is an important reason not only to send the children over here but also to support this school inshallah. And the third important reason that he mentioned I, and I totally agree and I would say one of the big reasons why more Muslims parents want to send the children to the schools, to the Islamic schools is because of LGBT. Definitely by the way, right? And I would say the price is worth it for us to send to a full-time Islamic school. So Alhamdulillah, you know, the, so the schools are a protection, it's a safety uh, for our children. So an ideal, an ideal agenda and, a, and an ideal syllabus for any Islamic school would include that we have to prepare our children that how they can also be uh, having an impact to tackle all of the social ills. LGBT is one of them, by the way drug problem, gambling problem, breakdown of the family structure, the family values are going down unfortunately, you know, the homicides, the suicide, the drug problem, you name it, there are so many social ills out there. So we need to realize and instill in our children that we cannot be oblivious to all the social ills. Allah has given us, you know, there are so many physicians over here, all of us, we are spiritual physicians and we have the prescription path, which is the Quran and the authentic Sunnah. If we don't have an impact in the society using the guidance Allah has given to us, there would be three entities who will hold us responsible. First and foremost, when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He may hold us responsible. That Allah, that I gave you such a big platform, such a big opportunity, right? And so many important resources. Why didn't you do your job? Number two, our non-Muslim neighbors may hold us responsible. That why didn't you, you know, enlighten us? We were drowning in darkness. And number three, our children may hold us responsible. That, you know, my dad, Abuji, Mama, you guys had the resources and the platform. Why did you left an environment in which all of these ills were increasing when you had the chance to tackle these things? Number third important uh, item in any, in any ideal syllabus would be the safety of the Muslims. What do I mean by the safety, right? Islamophobia is rising, the privacy issues are out there, right? The physical threats which are out there. So we need to make sure that every single one of us, we have to register to vote. There's no option, by the way, right? See, if we want, if we want to have an impact in the society, we just cannot always go and beg the president and the senators and the Congress and the, and the mayor and the governor. We have to take those seats. It's important for us. We have to take those seats. That means we have to brave, we have to become policy makers and we have to, we have to become registered voters. So some of you may have heard about the good news from Chicago two days ago. What do you think happened in Chicago two days ago? The ceasefire, the biggest, the largest city in the whole USA, right? That call for a, for a resolution for the ceasefire. And it was very close. You know, 20, so there are 50, 50 aldermen in the city of Chicago. 23 of them, they voted no for it, and 23 of them, they voted yes for it. And guess who did the tiebreaker? The mayor, the Brandon Johnson, right? He did the tiebreaker, but when we look at it, there is a context behind it. Muslims, we literally went to alderman after alderman. We went to the mayor many times and educated him. After doing all of that hard work, that's when he did the tiebreaker. 
So the point is that every single child, every single student, especially of this school and all the schools, we need to instill in them that our civic duty. That outside world, outside of the schools and the homes and the massages are also our responsibility. So that's number three. Number four, really important, an ideal agenda for any Islamic school would be that we need to develop the skills. We need to develop the skills in our students. So just to make it easy, by the way, inshallah, I'm going to mention the maybe five or six skills. And this would be easy for all, us to, uh, for all of us to remember. And these are all the forgotten sunnas. You know, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa why his sunnah was so dynamic? It is not just because he used to say Bismillah and eat with the right hand. Not that he used to pray extra prayers. Not that he used to eat the Zabiha meat. All of that by the way, but he had, uh, we, there are many many sunnahs which are forgotten. So just to make it easy for us to remember and to instill in this school and all the schools, if you remember the word petals. So petals is an acronym of every single forgotten sunnah. So the P stands for project management. So we need to make sure that project management skills to be instilled in every single child of this school and all the schools. So project management is not just uh, uh, important in the secular world, it is also part of the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you may be thinking, really? Come on, Brother Sabir, give me some example. You know, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he moved from Mecca to Medina, the day, of the, the day of the week that he left, the time of the day that he left from Mecca to Medina, the ride that he took, the companion that he took, and the guide that he took, and the route that he took, and how many days he's supposed to stay in the cave, who's going to bring the nourishment up there, and the route that he took from there, he already sent the ambassadors to do, to, to do dawah in Medina. All of these things are an excellent example of project management. So project management, instilling that in our children as a, as a curriculum is as much important as saying Bismillah and eating with the right hand. So the E stands for eating right and exercising. We have to give many khutbas and it should be a part of the curriculum of every masjid, every home, every parents that our bodies are responsibilities and that it should be instilled as part of the curriculum. That means eating right and also exercising, right? P-E-T. So the T stands for time management, right? I need to manage my time, okay? I don't want to over our time here. T for time management. You know, many a times we say that, okay, how do I have time? I don't have enough time for doing some Islamic activism out there. I say that, you know, if you have time to do vacations, if you have time to uh, go out for multiple umrahs, if you have time to watch the NBA games, uh, if you have time, go Bulls, all right? <laughs> if you have time to do so many things, mashallah, we should take out time for Islamic activism, right? So P-E-T-A, A stands for advanced knowledge. You know, there was a time, thousand years ago, we Muslims had the monopoly on knowledge. We were the ones that pulled the Europeans out from darkness and we gave them civilization. We were the founders, we were the fathers of uh, you know, medicine and uh, economic system and sociology and pediatrics and mathematics and biochemistry. We were the masters of all of that. So we need to instill in our children advanced knowledge and creating of the contents, by the way, important. So P-E-T-A, the L stands for leadership skills and uh, the S, petals, the S is my favorite. S stands for speaking skills, all right? We may have the best message out there, but if we cannot package the message and have the ums and the ahs and the filler words and no good opening, no good closing, no impact, doesn't matter how much knowledge that we have, it is not going to touch the hearts and the minds of the people. Every 8th grader, before they graduate from the MCC Academy, they go through an 8-week speaking class. Communication class, by the way, right? 
They have to go through that before they graduate. That's part of the curriculum. And I'm going to highly encourage that all these skills we also need to instill in these schools and all the schools. So one time I went to New York to give a Juma khutbah. So after the Juma khutbah and after the prayer, I was walking with uh, Brother Shahid Farooqi back to my car. Uh, as I was walking up there, we were crossing the sidewalk, and then we saw this lady, a non-Muslim sister. She was approaching us, and then she stopped, and she asked me the question. You know, were you the one who was giving the, this sermon? I said, yes, how can I help you, sister? So she said that, you know, I liked it, but I have a few questions. I said, yes, how can we help you? What questions do you have? So she had the typical questions about the hijab, about misconceptions about Sharia and Jihad and you know Jizya and all of the misconceptions. Alhamdulillah, about 10-15 minutes with her, uh, then she asked the question, Brother Ajmal, you know, I'm satisfied with what you're saying, Brother Sabil, how do I convert to Islam? And we said, Alhamdulillah, right? So there were many Muslims that were standing next to me, right? They were just watching this interaction. So she is about to take the shahada, but this one of the Muslim brothers, he stopped her and he said, uh, you know, uh, be careful, my dear sister. Uh, once you come to Islam, you cannot go back because if you go back, this will happen to you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I was so surprised. Come on, what are you saying, right? So good speaking skills means not only what you say, it is also what you should not say. And then you may be thinking, okay, brother, what happened? Did she run away? Did we run after her? <laughs> no, alhamdulillah, right? Allah guided her and she recited, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Lastly, 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 not only all of these skills, and the preparation and the activism should be instilled in an ideal Islamic school. There are challenges which are coming in the future. May Allah protect us from all of those challenges. One of the challenges would be atheism which is coming. And it is here unfortunately, right? The biggest, the, the largest segment of the fastest growing segment of a population in the USA would be the atheist. You know, there is a Pew survey that came out. 23% of the Muslims born and raised as Muslims, they don't identify themselves as Muslims anymore. That's a tragedy. Have you heard what I said, right? 23% of the Muslim, mostly the youth. So every ideal Islamic school syllabus need to make sure that along with the STEM classes, along with the chess skills and the volleyball, the basketball and excellent things we are teaching, we need to make sure that we, our children are grounded in knowing the facts that there is a creator. Every single branch of science points towards a creator. May that be biology, biochemistry, physics, you know, uh, cosmology. So it's a typical syllabus have to instill in that. So that's one challenge coming and we need to tackle it. Second challenge would be the BRICS coming, right? Anyone know BRICS? Nobody. BRICS, yeah, that one person, mashallah, right? You know, there are many nations out there. May that be China and Russia, one Saudi Arabia, right? India, Pakistan, many countries out there. They don't want to deal with dollar anymore, all right? So there may be a big crash of the dollars and we Muslims, we have to prepare ourselves for it. Financially, we need to prepare. Islamophobia is rising. So we need to prepare our children as they graduate, when they face the actual world, what are the rights we need to empower there. Personally, I think that our schools, our massages and our homes, we are not preparing enough. So we need to instill that agenda and that items in our Islamic school curriculum. One more thing which is coming, besides all of this, besides the LGBT, is the decline generally in the moral values. So we need to prepare for that. Bottom line is that our Islamic schools, our Islamic homes, our masajis, we need to add all of these items in the agenda, in the syllabus. That's when we can say that, Alhamdulillah, we are trying our best. May Allah protect the children, may Allah protect the parents, may Allah protect the Muslim Ummah, may Allah protect the humanity. So there would be three reasons I would say that why we should donate. Number one reason is that the schools are a safety places for the children to have that Islamic knowledge and the Islamic values.
Number one reason. Number two reason is that schools would be the preparation ground for Muslim children to realize that higher, bigger vision, uh, mission that they have a job to do to connect the creation with the creator. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And number three important reason, we need to prepare our children to have a peaceful and positive impact in the society when it comes to Amru bil Maruf, Nahi and Al Munkar and joining good and forbidding evil. As you are investing in this, not only this is only for the children, for the school, it will be a generational you know, a benefit. Just like when Nizamul Mulk and, Izam, uh, and Imam Ghazali, when they made those Islamic schools at that time, and from there came after 88 years, Salahuddin Ayyubi, I hope and pray with Allah's help, with your support, inshallah we can, we can create many, many Salahuddin Ayyubis. Ameen, may Allah make it possible. Jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.